is the release of Phaeton Hyperneva, the Albus Lloyd's coming to a close, which of course means a giant new boss monster. And what's Earth's grand finale battle quite like a level 12 ritual monster? Introducing Dogmatica Albazoa, the CEO of Hating Your Opponent's Extra Deck. Other than his huge stats at 4000 each, he also gives protection to all of your Dogmatica monsters, making them unaffected by Extra Deck monsters' effects. That's kinda nice since together with Right Relic of Dogmatica, they'll also be protected from battle with Extra Deck monsters too, so he's a pretty difficult guy to remove unless you just have back ray to do the job, but he also has an activated effect which is where it starts to get interesting. Upon activation your opponent can choose whether they want to return all of their Extra Deck monsters back to where they came from, or they can instead lose cards from their hand or Extra Deck, up to how many cards are in their Extra Deck divided by 2. So basically if they have a full extra deck that will be 7 cards lost, which for some combo decks that go through most of it in one turn, will completely shut them down, forcing them to instead discard from the hand. To make getting to this card along with the other Dogmatica rituals easier, we now also have Dogmatica Matrix. It's a continuous spell that searches them on activation, or searches their ritual spells if you already have them. Plus if your opponent already has a monster on board, so if you're going second, or just fighting Tierlament, you get to search a second Dogmatica card which could be any of the ritual things you need or even Ecclesia for further searching. It also has an effect that lets you send cards from either your extra deck or your opponent's, so again that's more searches for you, or just more destruction of your opponent's extra deck. So now we have a more consistent deck with a strong boss monster and lots of extra deck hate, but compared to my last Ritual Dogmatica video, I did some cool combos and even ended with Destiny Hero Plasma on board, it's just not quite as flashy is it? Sadly that deck has completely died with the ban list, so I knew I needed to do something a bit cooler with this one. Introducing another new card, Dynamondo. It's a link to that needs a ritual to work and has two effects, one letting you bounce a card on the field while recycling a ritual monster, and the second, which is the interesting one, allowing you to summon a ritual monster from the graveyard as a quick effect. Now if you've seen my prediction princess video, you'll know how powerful Myriologic Aggregator is for ritual decks, essentially searching both a ritual monster and a spell if you can summon it. In this deck we can make it thanks to a little one card combo I'll be showing you soon, allowing us to search both parts of… Magician of Black Chaos Max. Yep, you heard me. This card, as you might know, has a very powerful effect shutting down all opponent's monster effects for the rest of the turn when summoned. This is usually basically impossible to do, since we don't really have many ways to quick effect ritual summon, but with this deck's consistency, coupled with Dynamondo's effects, makes it actually very likely. So you end up with a board that shuts down your opponent's monster effects, while ripping apart their extra deck if they so much as try to activate anything really. Sounds interesting? Well let's take a look at how it's made. Here it is. Let's start with the rituals, which at first glance might seem like we're running fairly few of them. The reason why is because the deck doesn't really struggle to find any of their ritual parts, so you don't actually need to draw them in your opening hand. I opted for one Albazoa, two White Knight, and one White Relic, followed by one Chaos Max. The two White Knights are here because they're the right level for Chaos Max, making that summon easier. Don't forget that we can ritual summon from the graveyard with Dogmatica Macabre, so using them as a cost is fine. Then the regular Dogmaticas, one Fleur de Lys, two Maximus and three Ecclesia, basically ordered by usefulness. Now we come to the one card combo I was talking about. Diviner sends Trias Hierarchia, who tributes her, allowing us to summon this little Valkyrie who then summons Sigrun, giving us two level 9s from just our normal summon. We can cut Sigrun down to one copy, but it's riskier since she does need to be in the deck for the combo to work. Then we run a ton of spells, 2 Macabre, 3 Matrix, 3 Calamity, 3 Nadir, and 3 Branded and Essential Dogmatica. Most of those are self-explanatory, but this last one is basically extra searching during your combos, or just even more chances to pick apart your opponent's extra deck. Then as generic spells you run 3 Pre-Prep, 1 Chaos Form to summon Chaos Max, and two Pot of Avarice which could also be Prosperity or anything else you want really. If you do manage to use it though, it will allow you to get another bunch of searches with Herald, or even negates with something like Aggregator, so I think it's pretty useful. 
Finally, two copies of Punishment make very good use of your extra deck, since it's already full of cards that want to be sent to the graveyard. Speaking of, let's quickly look at the extra deck. Five-Headed Dragon is here because there just aren't really any good level 12s to send for Albazur as Calamity, so you might as well use the highest attack one available in case you need to send it with Punishment. Frank and Yul can summon Puskenion at times, Titanoclad searches Ecclesia, and then Entis and Arclight are sent for either Distraction or Searching respectively. We then run two Aggregators, one for the combo and one for its negation when sent. Gravity Controller links Aggregator Array, Dynamondo summons Chaos Max, and IP Mascarena can Quick Effect summon Dynamondo on your opponent's turn to get the most out of its first effect. And that's basically it! Make sure to side Ultimate Slayer in when going second, but besides that, let's check out some combos. So, combo time. Let's start by showing off that one card rank 9 combo. Summon Diviner and send Trias to the graveyard. Trias will then be able to tribute Diviner, then triggers to summon the level 1 Valkyrie. That then summons Sigrun, giving you the materials for Aggregator. When summoned, it sends Arclight, he'll search Chaos Form. Now use Aggregator's other effect to swap its materials for Arclight and anything else, before linking it into Gravity Controller to trigger Arclight a second time, this time getting you a Chaos Max. Then forget to negate something with Aggregator if your opponent controls something. At this point you'll need 8 levels worth of monsters as a tribute cost for Chaos Max, which really shouldn't be too hard. Once summoned, link it and the Valkyrie into Dynamonde, meaning you're now fully ready for the Chaos Max summon on your opponent's turn. Now Nadir can send the other Arclight, searching Relic, and then the Arclight searches Zera. By making Relic with Calamity, we can use the final Arclight to search Macabre, and also power up Right Relic with Dynamonde's attack. We then summon Ecclesia to get a Dogmatica Punishment, before tributing her and banishing some Arclights for Zera. You'll then proceed to rip apart your opponent's extra deck, and together as Relic, you'll have both Battle Protection and Extra Deck Effect Protection on your Dogmaticas. On your opponent's turn, as soon as you can, tribute Dynamonde to revive Chaos Max. You can then tribute Gravity Controller, locking your opponent out of all monster effects this turn. Together with your powerful Rituals and Punishment's Double Destruction effect, you've got yourself a pretty strong board. Now for our other replays, if you open with Diviner, you'll be doing mostly the same opening when possible, getting Chaos Max ready. Feel free to try and make some small world bridges if you want to be more likely to be able to pull this off. This time though, I just wanted to show you how it's fine to use White Knight as a cost for Chaos Max, since Macabre can just summon it right back again. That, and also showing that Maximus is great at varying the stack's end boards, by also allowing you searches of other Dogmatica monsters by sending a Titanic Lad. This time, I wanted to try and make use of IP Mascarena, which just involves using the Valkyrie as a material. We'll be making Albazera early, making sure the opponent loses a ton of cards from their extra deck, especially combined with Matrix's second effect. Thanks to all the searching, we'll end up with both Punishment and Fleur de Lys ready to go, in case the Chaos Max gets impermed. Now when your opponent has a card on board, you'll use Mascarena to link itself and Chaos Max into Dynamondo, or bounce something on the board while recycling one of your rituals. Then you can immediately trigger its other effect to bring out Chaos Max, either tributing itself or Ecclesia to lock your opponent out of monster effects for the turn, all backed up by Punishment and Fleur de Lys. Finally, here's a hand without Diviner, just to show you that she's not essential for the deck to work. Start by playing Central Dogmatica for later, and then search White Zora with Matrix. Then Pre-Prep searches both Macabre and White Knight. Finally we get another search for Relic with Nadir, before triggering Arclight to get Macabre. We don't bother with the Chaos Max stuff since we'll be locked out of the extra deck this turn, so we can't make Dynamonde, just in case you were wondering. 
Was this full hand of rituals stabbed by making a white knight was a macabre? Using Sigrun in hand. That allows you to send Titanoclad with Central Dogmatica, and also send Grand Guignol with Matrix. Then Calamity sends a level 12 dragon from your extra deck to easily summon itself, before sending half of your opponent's extra deck away. Now in your end phase, you get Titanoclad Search of Ecclesia into Fleur de Lys. You'll also have Grand Guignol available, who can summon Proskenion when your opponent special summons a monster. And there you have it! I hope you enjoyed this new take on Ritual Despia, and if you did, consider leaving it a like and subscribing. Special thanks to my patrons, and sorry for the long wait between videos. Thanks for watching!